Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to Team Referral Network's monthly webinar series, our Brown Bag Lunch and Learn. I'm Kelly Holmes, CEO and founder of Team Referral Network, and I'll be your host for today's featured event. The Brown Bag Lunch and Learn webinar series is designed for busy entrepreneurs, business owners, and business professionals like all of you who want to invest in knowledge so that it that can help them succeed in their business. Today's topic is Endless Referrals, the Go-Giver way, and our expert today is Bob Bird. And I'm going to take a moment here and share some information with you about Bob. Bob is a much sought after speaker at company leadership and sales conferences, sharing the platform with everyone from today's business leaders and broadcast personalities to even a former US president. Bob is the author of a number of books on sales, marketing, and influence with total book sales of well over a million copies. His book, The Go-Giver, co-authored with John David Mann, itself has sold over 925,000 copies and has been translated into 28 languages. His and John's newest parable in the Go-Giver series is the Go-Giver Influencer. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of the free enterprise system, something we share in common, believing that the amount of money one makes is directly proportional to how many people they serve. He is also an unapologetic animal fanatic and is a past member of the board of directors of Furry Friends Adoption Clinic and Ranch in his town of Jupiter, Florida. Please help me welcome the wonderful Bob Berg. Hi, Bob. Wow, what a nice introduction. Thank you, Kelly. Great to be with you. <laughs> it is great to have you here with us. You know, I know our audience is very familiar with you um, from Endless Referrals um, all the way through the various Go-Giver books. Um, but I'm just super excited because, you know, we haven't done an interview together in quite a while. So this is very special for me. I thank you for taking the time being here with us. Well, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. So I think we're going to just go ahead and jump right in here and talk about, because I think it's what our featured topic really is today with you, is the five laws of stratospheric success. Boy, that word even just stratospheric uh, is really big, right? Stratospheric <laughs> success. How'd you even come up with this stratospheric success? Uh, you know, John David Mann, my awesome co-author and, and really the, the lead writer in True Story, Tyler. You know me, I'm, I'm much more of a how-to guy. I'm step one, step two, step three. John has a, a great way with words. So, it, you know, it, it, it's been a while, so I don't totally remember, but it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if, if he kind of added that, that uh, word stratospheric in there. <laughs> okay. It's a big word. That's for sure. So I think we all want to achieve stratospheric success. You know, we certainly don't jump into this crazy world of uh, growing a business, um, not for the faint of heart. And we don't go into it saying, gosh, I hope I'm wildly mediocre. You know, exactly. we want to be wildly <laughs> successful, right? right? So stratospheric success, I think, is exactly. something that is a burning desire. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the first law, the law of value. Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. And I love that it starts this way. So share with us what you mean by the law of value. Yeah, and, and you know, it's a, a little bit counterintuitive when you first hear it too, because when, you know, you, you said the, how much more you give in value than you take in payment sounds almost like a recipe for bankruptcy, <laughs> right. Uh, right? So <laughs> let, let's kind of begin with a, a premise of, of really what the go-giver is even about, and then this will make a little more sense. Because the, the basic premise, Kelly, of, of the entire, entire go-giver series, but certainly in this, in this first book that we did, is simply that shifting your focus, and this is really the key, that shift in focus, from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, uh, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others, understanding that not only is doing this a, a, a more fulfilling way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. Not for some way out woo-woo kind of reason, uh, but it actually makes sense. It's, it's very logical. It's very rational when you think about it, because when you're that person, when you're that salesperson, when you're that entrepreneur who, unlike most of uh, most of the others, when you're that person who can 
who can take your focus off of yourself and your needs and place them on others, asking yourself, how do I bring immense value to this person's life? How do I help them solve problems? How do I make their lives better? How do I bring them more joy, fulfillment, what have you? When you do that, people, people feel good about you. They want to get to know you. They, they begin to know you. They, they, you know, they like you. They love you. They trust you. They want to be a part of your, your life. Um, and certainly they want to give value to you. And we call people like, we call people with this, what we call other focus, right? This focus on others. We call them go-givers. Uh, and they tend to be the most successful people financially as well as the other areas in which success can be measured, whether we're talking financial, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, social. But in this, obviously, in this context, we're talking financial. So let's take that then to the law of value and really dissect what this means. Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Well, how am I supposed to give more in value than I take in payment and survive in my business, never mind, you know, thrive? And to understand this, we simply have to understand the difference between price and value. And the difference is significant, uh, is significant rather. Price is a, a dollar figure, it's a dollar amount, it's finite, it simply is what it is. Value, on the other hand, is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, uh, of something, to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, what have you, that brings so much worth in the mind of the other person, so much value that they will willingly exchange their money for it and be ecstatic that they did while you make a very healthy profit. And, uh, you know, in the, in the book, we use an example of the restaurant owner, um, Ernesto. Uh, he has Ernesto or uh, Iafrate's Italian Cafe. It's a high-end cafe in the, as we described it, swanky part of town. And, and you know, when you go in there, you're going you're gonna to pay some good money, okay? But, but here's what happens. When you walk, from the moment you walk in, you're just treated royally. You know, they open the doors for you. They greet you with respect. They usher you in and you're greeted by the, you know, the, the employees in the restaurant and they, they, see, uh, they see you and the wait staff is there to serve you. And, and yet they have this knack of knowing when to leave you alone so you can enjoy yourself and, and when to come over and, and make sure, you know, see if the party needs you for something, needs them for something. The food is just, you know, it's served exquisitely. The presentation is fantastic. It tastes just out of this world. The ambiance of the restaurant's magnificent. Uh, you'll also get a, you'll often get a visit from, from Ernesto himself. And when you leave, you're just, you know, treated so wonderfully. So you may have come away paying, uh, you know, $150, $200 for the meal, okay? Mm -hmm. And yet you feel like a million bucks. <laughs> Your experience is so much more than what you paid. So you cut you. Re so he gave you more in value than he took in payment. Yet we also know that the cost of the goods sold, you know, the food and drink, the um, uh, his wait staff, uh, the machinery, you know, uh, the kitchen keeping his restaurant open and everything cost him a lot less than what he charged per meal. So he makes a very, very healthy profit as well. So give more in value than you take in payment doesn't mean you give more than you receive. It means you give in a certain way and you receive in a certain way, okay? So you both profit, but the, the customer always knows that they came away much better off than, than before. That's really the law of value. I love that. Really much better off than you were before. You really don't mind parting with your currency if you are experiencing something like that. So exactly. if we as business people are able to deliver that kind of value, we will make them happy. They will be happy to pay us for what we did for them and everybody succeeds as, and is happy as a result. Exactly. I loved what you mentioned a little bit um, in, earlier in this conversation here where you talked about the value 
that you add will help people know, like, and trust you. Because we talk a lot about that at Team Referral Network, that you can't instantly uh, develop a relationship with somebody, that it takes time before they're going to know you, like you, and trust you enough to actually refer you business, whether it's their own business or somebody that they know. Um, it's an important element. And when you give more value than you take in payment, people do um, recognize that, know, like, and trust you, and will start that process of building a relationship where they'll feel comfortable referring you business. Yeah, and that happens well, you know, even before you're necessarily doing business with them. Because as you know, you know, a lot of it has to do with timing. It certainly doesn't take, in fact, it takes, when you approach a relationship this way, Kelly, as, as you know, because you teach this, of course, when you approach a relationship this way, the no like and trust happens a lot faster, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're the type of person who's a go taker. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, you know, what, what happens is, and, and one reason uh, this is so important is because it's along the way, from the moment you meet this person, okay, and the relationship begins uh, through the uh, through the follow up and follow through, and through the 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 sales process and the and the referral process. You always want to be uh, looking for ways to to add value to this relationship. Because here's the thing: most products and services today are pretty much the same. I mean, we all take pride in what we have, but let's face it. You know, technology is pretty much leveled off the playing field. A product yes. is a product, and even a service is pretty much a service. Someone, you know, and even if you do what you do, or your product is a little better than the next person's, until that prospective customer or client knows that, they don't know that. Right. And if they cannot distinguish between any two or more salespeople, okay, they're always going to go with who has the lowest price. Right. And as I often say, unless your last name is uh, Walmart or you know, <laughs> Dave Walmart or, uh, you know, or Amazon.com, trying to make low price your unique selling proposition is mm -hmm. not a good way to do business. It's not productive. It's not profitable. It's not sustainable. When you try to sell on low price, when you lower your fee, when you try to be the lowest provider, lowest price provider, when you sell on low price, when you sell on price, you're a commodity. When you sell on value, high value, you're a resource. I love so, that. Yeah. And so, so how do we do that, though? How do we separate ourselves in a commodity-based world? Now, the short answer is you have got to be that additional value, right? Because it's you they're going to know, like, and trust. It's you they're going to do business with before they do business with your product, your service, and before they do business with the company. So the question becomes, well, how do I do that? Okay. And so the good news is there are probably hundreds of ways to, to communicate this additional value, but they tend to come down to five elements of value within the law of value. Okay. Mm -hmm. and the five elements of value are excellence, consistency, attention, empathy, and appreciation. And to the degree you're able to communicate those one or more, hopefully all five of those elements at every single touch point, again, from the initial contact, whether it was an inbound request on online or, or through the phone, or whether you met them at, at, a, at a business social charity function, whatever, wherever it happens to be, uh, uh, through again, through the you know, the, the follow up and the follow through and the whole process to the degree that you can communicate those elements of value. That is the degree that you take price and your competition uh, out of the picture. Nice. Now let's repeat those five again. Excellence. Excellence. Consistency. Con consistency. Attention. attention yeah. yeah. Empathy. Empathy. And appreciation. And appreciation. Okay, excellent. I'm writing those down. I'm taking notes too. And so I want you all to know, I hope you all are taking notes with what Bob is sharing with us today, because this is some great information. Love it, Bob. All right, let's move on to law number two, the law of compensation. Your income is determined by how many people you serve and, and I think this is, that this is the really important part, how well you serve them. So where law number one says to give more in value, then you take in payment. Law number two tells us that the more people we serve with the exceptional value you provide, 
the more money with which you'll be rewarded. If we go back to Ernesto's, uh, Ifrate's Italian Cafe, uh, sure, he provided exceptional value to each customer, each party, but doing it for just one party isn't going to make him a whole lot of money. Okay, right. so mm -hmm. it's also a matter of how many lives you impact. In fact, the mentor in that part of the story, Nicole Martin, the one we call the CEO, what did she say to Joe, the protege? She said, law number one, rep the law of value, that represents your potential income. But law number two, the number of people whose lives you impact with that exceptional value, that's, uh, you know, that determines your actual income. And, and so, you know, that's what, and that's why, you know, what you teach, referrals and, and network, that's why it's so important because we, you know, we know that there are many benefits from, from uh, working with referred prospects. There are you know, probably, you know, again, dozens of them. I think they come down to, these come down to four major benefits of uh, working with referred prospects. With referred prospects, it's easier to set the appointment, obviously, right? You're going in on someone, else, on the borrowed influence of someone else. Uh, when, you, um, when you're speaking with a referred prospect, price is generally less of an issue. That doesn't mean it's a non-issue or not an issue, but it's certainly less of an issue. Again, the borrowed influence, you're going in already as a person of value and you're able to focus on that as opposed to price. The third benefit of working with a referred prospect is it's easier to complete the transaction or close the sale. Why? Well, you're going in on borrowed trust or, or what I call vicarious experience. In other words, no, this person hasn't uh, done business with you before, but someone who they know, like, and trust has said, yes, this is the person you want to deal with. She's the only person you need to talk to. He's going to take amazing care of you. Their product is the, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and then uh, number four, the fourth benefit is referred prospects are already of the mindset that that's how you do business simply because that's how they met you. So in their world, they see you as a referral-based sales professional, an entrepreneur who meets people through referrals, who, who sells on high value rather than low price, who completes the transaction and then is referred to others. And as long as you know how to go about the process of proactively asking in the correct way, you're going to re you know, generally and consistently receive a lot of referrals. That's what we hope. <laughs> Oh, okay. So are we ready to move on to the law of influence? Yeah, sure. Let's go on to uh, law three. All right. Law number three, the law of influence. Your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. Boy, this might be a tough one for some people, right? You know, Kelly, this is another one of those sort of like the, the first law. It, it's counterintuitive when you first see it. Uh, sounds almost counterproductive and at best, right? And mm -hmm. maybe worse, Pollyanna-ish, mm -hmm. right? And yet you think about it. The greatest leaders, the top influencers, the highest producing, highest money earning salespeople, this is simply how they run their lives and conduct their businesses. Mm -hmm. They're always looking for ways to make it about the other person. Now, let me qualify this if I if I may because this can be easily misunderstood and I think it's very very important when we say place the other person's interests first we certainly don't mean you should be anyone's doormat absolutely not at all we're not saying you should ever be self-sacrificial or a martyr in any way absolutely not right Simply as Joe, the protege in the story, learned from several of the mentors, what you and I discussed earlier, right? The golden rule of business, which is all things being equal or close enough to equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. And there's simply no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you from others than by genuinely and authentically moving from that I focus or me focus to that other focus. And, you know, make, as, as Sam, one of the mentors in the story advised Joe, making your win all about the other person's win. 
And as you do this, again, constantly and consistently, and you develop a reputation as such, you will be that center of influence. You will be that go-to person. You will be that person who is very quickly developing what we call an army of personal walking ambassadors. That's well, one of my favorite terms there. We'll be talking about that a little bit later too. You know, I think today too, sometimes influence can be, um, let's just say confused with our social media presence. Uh -huh. And I, I think we're talking two different types of influence here. And I'd love for you to share that kind of information with our audience today. You know, it's one thing to have 5,000 followers on your Facebook, okay? Um, but it's quite another thing that you live your life in a way of constant service. People are drawn to you. You are an influential person in a way that I think really matters in this law. Do you see a difference with that? Um, yeah, and, and here's really, I, I think, what it comes down to, because on social media, when we talk about influencers, uh, we're, we're really talking about people who are maybe paid by companies to, um, uh, you know, to, to advertise, in a sense, to advertise their, their product or service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, why, uh, and so we're, we're certainly, we're not talking about, about that in this case, although there's a reason why those people who are those online influencers, why they are looked at it as such by those companies asking them to do that. And by the way, mm -hmm. we've always had social influencers long before social media, yeah. mm -hmm. all the television commercials. <laughs> so the sponsored ads, the celebrity well, endorsements, mm -hmm. you and I are old enough to know that. Um, but well, so. Exactly. Well, I am. I don't think you are, but I, I am. <laughs> and, so, you know, when you say see somebody, right, on, uh, when you see, uh, what was his name, Robert, um, oh, he was the guy who played Marcus Welby, and uh, Father Knows, uh, and I, I can't Oh, yes, um, okay, but yeah, I can't remember his last no, name, but I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He played a doctor on TV, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, he's, he's getting paid to shill for Anison or whatever it was he was doing. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, logically, we know he's no more qualified to tell us which aspirin we should buy than anybody else's. But he was Dr. Welby, right? right. Mm -hmm. so, you know, he has influence in that way because mm -hmm. most people aren't thinking that far ahead. Or, or some athlete who's using, you know, some professional baseball player who's shilling for, um, you know, motor oil or something. Well, mm -hmm. what qualified, right? But right. They're an influ they have influence. So let's look at influence. Let's, let's, let's go into this a little bit and see how this, this relates and what we're really talking about here. See, influence by definition, and this is on a very, very surface level, let's start there. Influence can be defined, again, very basically as simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action. Mm -hmm. that, that's by, Nate, by definition, that's influence. Now, that's its definition. But the way we're talking about influence, uh, you know, everyone on this, on this call, that, that's not what we mean. So, so that's not the, the characteristic of influence. The, the, the main characteristic of in, the essence, if you will, of influence is pull. Pull as opposed to push, as in how far can you push a rope? And we know the answer is not very far, at least not very fast or very effectively, which is why great influ true influencers, what we call genuine influencers, don't push, right? Uh, you never hear someone say, wow, that Tom or, or that Cindy, she is so influential. She has a lot of push with people. Right. No, they'd say she has a lot of pull with people because mm -hmm. that's what influence is. It's pull. It's an attraction. And that's how influencers are trying. Now, how do they do that? How do they do that? Well, they, they first, they uh, understand, they attract people to themselves and only then to their ideas. Now, so how does this, this pull manifest itself? You know, this goes back to something Dale Carnegie wrote in his classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's what I believe was the underlying premise of his entire book. And that's where he said, ultimately, People do things for their reasons, not our reasons. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why the genuine influencer understands that not on only a, 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 a brain level, but at a heart level. And that's why a great influencer is going to ask themselves questions to make sure their focus is correct. In other words, how does what I'm asking this person to do, how does it align with their goals? Mm -hmm. How does it align with their needs, their wants, their desires? How does what I want this other person to do, how does it align with their values? What problems am I helping them to solve? Uh, how am I helping them to make their life better? You know, this is why sales, I, I define selling as simply discovering what the other person wants, needs, and desires and helping mm -hmm. them to get it. Yeah. Okay. So this is influence. And, you know, a genuine influencer understands that it's always, that influence is, great influence is never about the influence. It's always about the other person. That's how you pull. That is great. And it's very valuable information there too, because I really think sometimes in today's world, getting caught up in a lot of hype and things like that, we don't think as deeply as perhaps we should about this influence that we'd all like to have and how we really can add value to other people's lives utilizing that influence. So excellent, thank you, Bob. Let's, let's move on to the next law, the law of authenticity, which I think goes right to that heart issue that you were talking about there. The most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And, and I, I truly believe for all of our audience, the people that will be listening to this particular webinar, uh, that this is something that really is important to them. And I think it's something that they strive to do on a regular basis. So share with us a little bit about the law of authenticity. Well, in the story, Deborah Davenport, one of the mentors, she, she discussed in her speech, she shared uh, a very important lesson that she learned in her sales career, which is what really launched her. And that is all the skills in the world, the sales skills, technical skills, people skills, as important as they are, and indeed they are all very, very important. They're also all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. Mm. But we do. When you, as we like to say, show up as yourself day after day, week after week, month after month, people feel good about you. People feel very comfortable with you. People feel safe with you. People know you. They like you, they love you, they trust you. They are much more, much more likely to want to be in relationship with you, to do business with you if they need what you, what you have, but definitely willing to introduce and refer you to others. And it kind of brings up the question that if authenticity is such a great way to not only live life, but conduct business, why do so many people not show up authentically? Um, and, and I think the, you know, the default answer, the very natural answer is to say, well, they're just not honest. Or they're trying to pull one over on us. And certainly there are, you know, it's a big world. There are people like that. We've got to understand that and be, and acknowledge that. But in this, in the, that's usually not the case here. You know, I'd say 99.99 .99 times out of a hundred, when someone is not showing up authentically, it's really because they don't have the self-confidence to mm -hmm. do so. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize and understand the true value that they authentically bring to the table. And let's face it, it's tough to show up authentically when you don't believe you have anything worthy of authentically showing up for. Isn't uh, that true? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we, we all have, I think, two types of authentic value. One is, is, is what I call intrinsic value. And intrinsic or internal value, however you want to say it, is simply just by being a human being, we bring great value to the table. But we also have what I call market value. And I define market value as that combination of strengths, traits, talents, and characteristics that allows a person to bring value to others, to individuals, to the marketplace, in such a way that they will be financially rewarded for it. And we all have uh, market value. We all have those traits, those talents, those characteristics. Uh, 
Um, the challenge is that as human beings, we're so close to ourselves emotionally that it's often very difficult for us to, you know, see past a lot of those hangups we all have, right? You know, <laughs> human, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really recognize that, you know, that greatness, that, that, that real good stuff we bring to the table and bring to others, which is, you know, which is one of the reasons you know, that it, it's so great to be in a group like yours because there are people there who will help you with that. Who will say, wow, this is, you know. Yeah, and, I, and so I think that's so important to, to be around other people who, who will notice these things. And they're not just going to soft sell and just tell you what you want to hear, but they're going to say, hey, you need to recognize this is something that you are really good at. And, and to be able to do that. And, and so that's why I think it's, it's important to work on that and really, but you know, there's, there's another aspect though of authenticity that I, I wanna talk about if we, if we have a moment to do so. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a way I think people confuse the term authenticity. Uh, I think some people, they kind of use it as an excuse. They, they look at authenticity, they say, well, you know, this is the way I am, take it or leave it which is an excellent philosophy, by the way, if you want to have no friends, horrible relationships. And <laughs> right. Okay. But mm -hmm. assuming that's not the case. Um, no, um, you know, it's like the person who says, uh, you know, well, I have anger issues and I yell at people a lot and that's just the way I am. And if I were to act any differently, that wouldn't be authentic. And of course we know that's malarkey, uh, that's baloney. What, that, what it means is that this person has an authentic problem mm -hmm. uh, that they need to authentically work on uh, in order to, to overcome this and become an authentically more effective version of themselves. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to use authenticity as a reason to not grow, okay? Uh, or to let ourselves off the hook. We want to utilize authenticity as a stepladder for taking us to our higher authentic level. Love it. You know, in, in team, especially over the last, you know, maybe a little less than a decade, probably, we have really seen an explosion of coaches, life coaches, business coaches, health coaches. And I think they're they're working on, in many instances, working with people to really get to that place of authenticity, but the best version of themselves as their authentic self shows up. So yes, that's a great law, law of authenticity. I'm gonna move on to the next one, law number five. Here, the law of re receptivity, I hope I'm gonna be saying that correctly. The law of receptivity. Um, I think this is probably something that I personally have struggled with over the years. Um, actually being open to receiving, uh, receiving help, receiving gifts, you know, receiving had always been a difficult uh, part of my life until I had kids. And uh, when you have kids, you know, you got to accept help in some way, shape or form. You've got a crazy life. And, and um, it was something that I had to learn as a well into my 30s adult um, to be open to receiving. So share with me the law of receptivity. Yeah, and this is probably the most difficult for, for most people, especially if you have a natural giving spirit, then, you know, the, then, then this can be difficult. And it goes even, even deeper, that, and we'll, we'll get to that as well. And it's, it's a great point that you brought up. So, yeah, the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Now, what we mean by this is that, you know, we, we breathe out, but we also have to breathe in, mm -hmm. right? Not mm -hmm. one or the other. We breathe out carbon dioxide, we breathe in oxygen. You couldn't survive without doing that, never mind thrive. Uh, we breathe out, which is giving, and we breathe in, which is receiving. And contrary to the many, many messages we receive from the world around us, uh, whether it's growing up, whether it's in school, social circles, whether it's, it's the media, whether, it, you know, what have you, um, con you know, we receive, when it comes to abundance, prosperity, money, uh, we receive not, not mixed messages, <laughs> excuse me, we receive very consistently negative messages. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really take it in, I mean, you would think that in order to succeed and make a lot of money, 
you have to do it on the backs of others, right? Mm -hmm. you, by taking advantage of people and by, and now, again, there's people out there in the world, there's people who do those things. But you know, for, for people like all of us who live, who operate our businesses within a free market kind of system, in terms of no one is forced to do business with us, right? Mm -hmm. No one's gonna do business with you. No one's gonna buy from you because you have a quota to meet. They're not gonna buy from you because you need the money and they're not gonna buy from you just because you are a really nice person. They're gonna buy from you because they believe they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And all of us on this call, that's how we have to do business, which is good. Because it means that the person who can focus on that other person creates that context for success. Now, so, but we, we, we get these messages from the world around us uh, about that, you know, that, I mean, here's a headline that you'll never see. Corporate CEO treats people fairly. <laughs> Salesperson over delivers. Okay. No, those don't sell. What does sell? Uh, you know, Enron, uh, Tyco, uh, Volkswagen falsifying their emissions. Uh, hey. mm -hmm. uh, uh, the bank that, you know, that, that um, was pressured uh, by leadership to, to, oversell, you know, all these, open up these fake new accounts, all these, okay? I mean, that's what sells, that's right. what sells. And there's a very natural um, aspect of human nature. And um, I, I thought this was pointed out excellently in the uh, book, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. And that is, as human beings, we tend to believe what we hear last and what we hear most. Mm. even if it's not true. And so, you know, we hear those things and understand you, it's not just for media. You see this in every movie. My friend Randy Gage, who speaks on prosperity, talks about, you know, in pretty much every blockbuster movie, there's typically two different types of characters that are portrayed. There are the good people who are generally portrayed as poor, but happy and honest and struggling. And they're always, you know, put down, stepped on, stepped over, taken advantage of by who? The rich people who are mean and nasty and cowardly and have no soul. Notice that next time. It's amazing. And there's no conspiracy out there to keep us poor and, and you know, in a bad mindset. It's just what sells. It's human nature. And so it's very important that we understand this and that we make a study of prosperity because we get enough lack just from, you know, the natural. Right world around us and so so it goes back to breathing out and breathing in giving and receiving are not opposite concepts giving and receiving are simply two sides of the very same coin and they work in tandem the key the key is understanding that we focus on the giving remember we focus on on providing exceptional value to the lives of everyone we touch we focus on the giving, but then we need to allow or stay open to mm -hmm. the receiving. Otherwise, we block the flow of prosperity. But you know, that's why it's so important to, to you know to be focused on the giving aspect because you know when you think about it, money is simply an echo of value. Money is an echo of value. It's the the thunder if you will, to values lightning, which means nothing more than the focus must be on the other person. The focus must be on, on giving value to the, the other person. The money you receive is simply a, a natural result of the value you provided. Excellent. I really like that. And, you know, this is the fifth law, and I'm going to go back quickly and, and just scroll back through our slides here and have everybody take one more look at the five laws. The law of value, okay? Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. The law of compensation, your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. The law of influence, your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. 
The law of authenticity, the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And the fifth law that we just reviewed, the law of receptivity, the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Those are amazing, Bob. And I, they know they make up the, uh, the book and the concepts behind that and all of the different great stories that are in there. But I know our biggest obstacle sometimes is our self, right? And so it's not just about seeing, it's about doing. How do we create this whole process utilizing these five laws and put it into a plan and then actual action? Yeah, well, that's why in the story, the, the one condition that Pindar, the main mentor, gave Joe, the protege, was that he had to apply each law that he learned, you know, that, that day, he had to apply it that very day. Mm -hmm. Because action is very important. Uh, you know, people mistakenly think the opposite of a go-giver is a go-getter. But mm -hmm. it's not. We love go-getters because go-getters take action. Go-getters mm -hmm. get things done. Um, there's no natural division between a go-getter and a go-giver. Um, many go-getters are also go-givers, and we would say every go-giver is, is also a go-getter. So what we want is to be people to be go-getters and go-givers. Now, the opposite of a go-giver is a go-taker. Yes. That's the person who's focused on themselves only, and to them, it's all about the take. And, and you know, it's take, take, take without having added value to the person, to the process, to the, the situation. And so, but, but yes, you want to, you know, apply the information. It doesn't have to be applied perfectly. It doesn't even have to be applied very well, but you apply it and, you know, and you, you go with it because un, until you apply it, nothing's going to happen. I love that. I love that. You got to be a go-getter as well as a go-giver. Okay. All right. Now we mentioned this earlier in the webinar. When you have your own army of personal walking ambassadors, you'll have referrals coming your way faster than you can handle them. That is a bold statement, but one I personally know to be true. I have built an entire organization on this premise and we have that army out there of walking ambassadors. And I'd love for you to share how this fits into your work, Bob? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it, it, let, let's face it. Uh, it. It doesn't matter how high tech we get, but I'd say the more high tech we get, the more high touch is involved. And it's and there's so many choices out there today that we're much more likely to, uh, to do business with others based on a recommendation, based on referrals. Uh, you know, the, the best thing you can say so, to, you know, to somebody, I guess, is to, you know, check the internet about me and see what's said, but, uh, or that would be the second best, but the best is when someone who they know, like, and trust is singing your praises. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I'm, I mean, I think that's what it's all about. And, you know, that's why I've told you I have an upcoming uh, event, an upcoming workshop called Endless Referrals, the Go-Giver Way. And we really want people to, you know, proactively, uh, pursue referrals. So it's not just a matter of people feeling so great about you that, that, you know, they're out there. That's always wonderful when that happens. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We love those. But we should also be proactively uh, pursuing the referrals as well. We want to get to the point where we're still prospecting, but we're prospecting within our referral network. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It is a beautiful thing. Well, quickly, Bob, because we're right at the end of the webinar here, tell us how our audience can get in touch with you, whether they want to um, get your books, if they want to um, get your fantastic tips that you email out, um, your information, information on your upcoming workshops. Um, how can our audience get best in touch with you? Uh, they can go to either thegogiver.com. Uh, if they want to... Um to uh, subscribe to the video series we've been doing. We have about 20 videos, I think, out there on uh, endless referrals, yes. go give away. Uh, just go to Berg, B-U-R-G dot com slash blog. Uh, and then the, you know, the last one is at the, the top. So you want to scroll down <laughs> to number one in the series. Uh, and then for those of you who are, who are really the ambitious type, because it's only a week away, so there's not enough time to do that. But surprisingly, we, we do get people who, who do this within the last week. Uh, next week, 24th and 25th, we are holding a two-day, very intensive workshop uh, in Orlando uh, called Endless Referrals, The Go-Giver Way. And this is where 
Uh, and there's only going to be about 30 people. So it's very uh, personalized. Very like intimate. That. Yeah, nice. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not me and my big mouth up there just speaking for two days. <laughs> it's work, you know, and all of us sharing ideas, and really putting together your referral system for 2000 or uh, yeah, 2020, I should say, 2020. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, check out endlessreferrals.com, endlessreferrals.com. Scroll down the page and look through it and see if, it, if, if what's there is what you're looking for. And uh, then if it is, just um, uh, decide whichever of the three packages would work best for you and, and register for that one. And I'll see you next, uh, next uh, week in Orlando. That's great. Well, I want to thank you, Bob, for being our expert on this month's webinar. We really uh, loved the information, loved having you on. I really want to encourage people to go to your blog, yourberg.com forward slash blog for those video tips, because I've personally been getting them in my inbox and I love them. Um, I've always loved your information. We've known each other for a number of years, but just seeing it come out in the bite-sized pieces makes it just wonderful information for me to digest and put into play. Uh, so, so thank you for those and thank you for being our expert this month. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Take care.